Hi friends from all over the world. It's another beautiful day and thank you for subscribing. If you are new to this channel, click on the subscription button and click on the notification bell so that anytime I make future videos, you'll be the first person to be able to see it. Also a special shout out to Loretta for making this video possible, for giving me updates and tips, putting them together to make this video a success. Thank you so, so much. And to all my commenters, those who send me emails, thanking me for my Ireland video. If you haven't seen it, it's in my playlist. You can go and watch it. Thanks for the motivation, for the emails, for the messages daily. I know it's going to be of benefit to you. So today I'm going to talk about the NMC UK CBT update. I mean the latest update. I don't know if you guys have heard it or you've seen it anywhere, but there have been changes as we heard last year that this summer there are going to be changes to the NMC CBT and this is now the updates are out and I don't know if you guys have heard it. And for those of you who don't know about CBT, CBT is a test that is required by the Next Semi-Refer Council of UK to be able to register and practice fully and effectively in the UK as an overseas list. And hey, let me pass this out, that if you have already written CBT and your CBT is supposed to have expired between March and August this year, 2020, I have good news for you. The NMC of UK has automatically added six months to your CBT validation period and so your CBT is going to expire next year 2021 somewhere around March or February and I know this is very good news because of the COVID-19 changes are happening all over the world and this is good news to those who CBT are supposed to expire between February, sorry March and August this year. Now let's go back to business. I'm trying to do a separate video on the entire UK process, how to start the A to Z entire guide on how to come over to the UK as a registered nurse or midwife. But I'd like to throw more light on the CBT because of the updates and the changes that has been made. And so if you want to write the CBT test, you should make sure that first and foremost, you are a registered nurse from your home country and you are registered with your mother regulatory body. You should have passed your ILTS or your OET test, whichever one you want to do first. Some write the CBT first, some write the ILTS first. But if you want to write the CBT, you have to go to the NMC UK's website, which I'll be linking in the description box down below. You register, you put in some details, and the portal will be created for you. You pay some money. I'll put, put all that in my next video when I'm talking about the entire UK process. So you pay this money and then you'll be granted permission to go ahead with your registration. The next thing you do is to go to your mother regulatory body in your home country and request for verification of your license. They will take all your details to the NMC UK and if they are okay with your document and you are eligible, they send you a decision letter. With the decision letter, you can go to the person's view center in your home country. I don't know your location, but in Ghana, it is adjacent to the city house close to the British Council in Accra. You go with your decision letter and you apply to write your CBT test or you can do it online. You apply to write your CBT test, you choose your date and when your date is due, you go in and write your CBT test. Now let's go to the changes that are going to be made. So now the CBT is going to be split into two parts. That is the numeracy and the theory aspect. It sounds um, strange, but it's nothing difficult. It's similar to the old structure, just that a little bit of changes are going to be implemented. So you have the theory and the numeracy part. And now guys, it's going to be three hours instead of four. When I was writing mine, it was four hours for 120 questions, but now it's going to be three hours for 120 questions and you have the numeracy and the theory aspect as I said earlier. So with the numeracy, you are supposed to do some pharmacological calculations. You might be given a question and you are going to calculate. It's uh, like a drug. We'll be seeing an example briefly to so calculate and get the answer. But now you can use calculators in the exam centers. Formerly, you were just given a board and a marker so that you do your own calculations. But now you can be permitted to use a calculator in the examination centers. And with this numeracy part is 30 minutes 
in, you are going to be awarded 15 marks. So by 30 minutes, you should finish with the numeracy aspect and the marks are 15 and you should pass. Let's look at an example. A patient is prescribed 140 milligrams of phenobarbital. Stock ampules contain 200 milligrams per mil. What volume must be withdrawn in mil for the injection? So that's it. After the numeracy aspect, you move over to the theory aspect, which is 2 hours and 30 minutes. You should complete this part. And it's mostly going to be generic nursing questions. Throw more light on Bloom's taxonomy and the others. It's nothing difficult. Once you have access to the materials, which I'll be bringing in a separate video, you can pass first attempt. Actually, the CBT pass rate is very, very high. It's just a, a little um, fraction of people who are not able to make it. But once you put in effort and you read wide and you have been in nursing training before and you are practicing as a nurse, CBT should be a plus for you. So by 2 hours 30 minutes, you should finish your part B or the theory aspect and you wait for your results within 24 hours. Sometimes it comes within an hour on your portal, sometimes by the, uh, at most by 24 hours, your results should be ready. And guys, it's advisable to write your ILTS before your CBT because the CBT is valid for two years. And within the two years, you should write your OSCE, which is your practical exams in the UK. So it's advisable to write your ILTS first so that you know that you have met the requirements. And when you go over to the UK, you know, waste so much time to pass in your OSC exams. So let me quickly add this. If you are filling in your details to register with the NMC of UK, try as much as possible to provide accurate details, especially with your house and address, your name, your passport number and all that. Make sure that all the details you are providing are very accurate and you are registering as an overseas nurse. So be very careful you are not registering as an EU nurse if you are from not from an English speaking country because that can delay your process a bit. And the decision letter now is super fast. By two to three weeks you should have your decision letter. And also the price of the CBT has been reduced. I think now it's 83 pounds to register for the exams and you have to pay 140 pounds to the NMC of the UK to be able to register with them. And also if you write your CBT and you're not able to make it a first attempt, you are given a month to rewrite. And after your second attempt, you are given six months to take your time, learn and come back to take the test again. But as I said, it's not difficult and I'm very optimistic they are going to make it at the first attempt. Thanks so much for watching, for subscribing, for liking, for giving it a thumbs up and for sharing this video. As usual and as always, my name still remains Rebecca Ajeman and I am your nurse in this journey straight to the top. I'm trying to do a video on the complete guide as I said earlier from your home country to the UK to practice as an overseas nurse and I know you are going to be anxious, readily waiting and I will deliver. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your feedback. Thanks for your love and everything. I'm your partner in success straight to the top. Bye.